would be great um, if you can uh, develop something that from this too this <laughs> is there a way you can learn them to hold it more in a more fine grip yeah. like this But then with hemiplegia, yeah, well, it's uh, it's a challenge. Work with both hands. Yeah. Maybe then the fork to stabilize. It's this, but now we must to hold it. The curve is important, I think. When the real fork, he wanted to put the blade between the teeth mm -hmm. of the fork. So, for now, if there is or so big teeth. Yeah, Maybe yeah. you can. Nog een beetje, nog een beetje. Zijn er twee stukjes? Ja. Let's kijken. Hey, goed zo. Wow. cuts between the two teeth. This he was not doing before. No, no, I've never seen it that he, that he does it. So that's quite a progress. We can go further on the second shape. It's imaginable that you also uh, uh, goes with a, with a knife from step to step. Like Willem is growing um, in his development, also the, the, the cutlery is growing with him. Next to you, or maybe you want to go for a dance. This mix done live, grab bags right here. Wow, you're a good dance, Frank Lovey. <laughs> Thank you. I've been practicing for you. That's so sweet. 
I love to hold you in my arms and see how your hair wave on the wind and touch my face. I feel so protected in your arms. You're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. Oh, Frank Love. I love the way your hair wave on the wind and touch my face. I love the way your eyes twinkle in the sunshine. I would hold you in my eyes forever. They've just been made for it. Will you never leave me? I'll never leave you. Wait, I'll turn the lights down. For you. Mm, I'm so hard. Mm. Ah, I'm broke here. Yeah. Do me, honey. Do me right here. I love you. I love you too, baby. I love you. Oh yeah, I do care about you, you know? Yeah, I, I care too, but um, you know? <laughs> Tough. Let's admit it's not that fun anymore. Well, it's for me. Because we have each other. But we don't really have each other, you know?
Is this me? No way. When did I get into this mess? Are you sure this is me? Yes, you respond to my questions. inizia a, ah, a fare casino sì. sì. allora tu li già non
piace a Non ti piace. Non ti piace. Esce un altro vulcano. <ride> veloce, veloce. Veloce, veloce. Fatto veramente così. Che c'è come dei dislivelli, come delle montagne. Oh, oh, aspetta perché qua lo stai facendo... <ride> Geniale, mi piace l'onda. Ecco. pronti per mangiare? Oh, no, una marea di fango. No. Catamarano. Aspetta. Perché forse dalla costruzione lui è, è un po'. Eh? Ah, non ci dovremmo fare. No, ma... Con un vizio di forma. Ha un vizio di struttura. Sì. <ride> No, sì, no. Vuol dire... Assolutamente ti ho fatto provare gli arancini. Quando poi ti scoprirà, vorrai farli, vorrai imparare a fare gli arancini. E il tuo bambino adorerà gli arancini e tu avrai risolto... Ma gli arancini cosa sono... È del riso. Con un cuore di mozzarella, può dire a voi. And they go on and on and on about their sustainable energy solutions. But it sounds to me like they're just wasting their breath. I've got the solution. I'm human, but I feel like an insect inside. And that's because I was raised by termites. They taught me everything I know. Like how to live off dead wood, and how to live off the wind. Some, some people have tried to make me adapt to human behaviors. I just couldn't do it though. I mean, take toilets for example. Why do you flush them? 
It's such a waste. It makes me want to wheeze.
16 But I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ, the head of a wife is her husband, and the head of Christ is God. Every man who prays or prophesies with his head covered dishonors his head, but every wife who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head, since it is the same as if her head were shaven. For if a wife will not cover her head, then she should cut her hair short. But since it is disgraceful for a wife to cut off her hair or shave her head, let her cover her head. For a man ought not to cover his head, since he is the image and glory of God, but woman is the glory of man. First misunderstanding, hair is a women's covering. There are some keys parts written in this passage that wouldn't make sense unless the Bible was referring to a head covering of cloth. A. Since it is the same as if her head were shaven this verse says it is the same as if she were shaven, why would the Bible use the word same if it was literally talking about a woman's hair being shaven off? B. For if a wife will not cover her head, then she should cut her hair short again. If the Bible was referring to a woman's hair this verse wouldn't make sense. In nature a woman's hair is her covering, but in prayer the Bible calls for a covering of cloth. Second misunderstanding, it doesn't apply today, this is more of a denial than it is a misunderstanding but I thought I'd add it anyway, I have heard this many, many many times in my experience in wearing head coverings and my question is why? Why does this no longer apply? 2 Thessalonians 2.15 So then, brothers, stand firm and hold to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by our spoken word or by our letter. 1 Corinthians 11 1 2, 2 Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. Now I commend you because you remember me in everything and maintain the traditions even, as I delivered them to you. Doesn't the Bible clearly state here we are to follow the traditions the Lord has laid out for us through all the years? When the Word of God was written don't you think God knew that times would change? Is He not all-knowing? Third misunderstanding, so you think you're better, this misunderstanding I have only heard a few times but I thought I had it too. All I can say to this is it isn't true, I and other Christian women, who cover don't believe ourselves to be better than anyone simply because we cover. Then are hundreds of things the Bible says to follow and just, because we cover doesn't mean we succeed in all these areas. We fail just like everyone else. However, the commandment should not be broken. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 10 says for this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Unquote. So angels will be our witnesses for those who fail to observe this law. Our body is physically present. Our mind wanders somewhere else. Many of us may have experienced this imbalance as a form of jet lag. Mis amigos y mi familia están al otro lado del océano. Cada vez que viajo a visitarlos vivo los inconvenientes del jet lag. Es como una sensación de desajuste. Por algunos días no estoy conectado con el medio que me rodea. La forma en la que me comunico con ellos a través de internet y las redes sociales también se encuentra en un estado de perfecto jet lag. Constantemente, interrumpido por la diferencia horaria, por ejemplo, mientras me estoy despertando y respondo a un mensaje, ellos ya están en la cama durmiendo. Este tipo de comunicación causa una perturbación en nuestro ritmo y hábitos diarios. Nowadays, the jet lag caused by the internet is omnipresent. We can simply not connect meaningfully to whom we interact with on the other side of the screen. The more time we spend online, the less face-to-face -face interactions happen. This disconnection can be seen as loneliness. As we fly across time zones or surfing the internet, we are choosing not to be in the present. It is like escaping from the reality that surrounds us. 
The difference is that when we fly across time zones, our bodies adjust to their new rhythm, recovering back their balance after a few days. The problem is that nowadays, we don't give our bodies the opportunity to adjust. We are constantly absorbed by our screens and the internet. We are energetic beings, and so is the Earth. And our modern lifestyle has increasingly separated humans from the flow of the Earth's electrons. We are flying high more than ever, constantly plugged into our devices and being isolated by non-conductive materials, such as rubber and plastics in our shoes or asphalt in our floors. When we make direct contact with the surface of the Earth, our bodies receive a charge of energy that makes us feel better and helps to improve our well-being. A simple way to do so is to put our feet back on the ground. Going barefoot reconnects us with the harmonizing rhythms of the earth. This provides us with many benefits, such as improving our sleep, increasing our energy, reducing pain, tension, and stress. Only by restoring our natural balance of the body can we connect to our environment, others, and ourselves. Hi everyone, so today we're going to visit another potato farm and it's going to be the renowned one where fries are made. So if your children dream of one day becoming a fry as well, this might just be the right farm to have a look at. Here we are. It's a very modern kind. Equipped with all the facilities that make sure your potatoes turn into just the right product. And because of the rising demand for fries, these potato farms also tend to be larger, giving plenty of opportunities for potatoes to mingle. These are just some free-range fries frolicking around. And if we just take a step closer, all these curious little potatoes come towards us. See how nice and healthy they look. At this potato farm, the young are particularly well taken care of, with their needs monitored and cared for by giving them just the right amount of water, sun and fertilizer to ensure them to grow strong and crunchy. But let's move on to see the fields where the potatoes are grown. We all started out like this. The ones you see on this field here are russet potatoes. Russets are oval, so they produce longer fries than a rounder shaped variety would. Russets are also sufficiently crunchy when fried. When ripe, They are then carefully lifted out of the ground, examined, after which they will be placed in one of the cooking stations. This is where the magic happens. So I want to cut these potatoes into even slices. A good indicator to know how thick to cut them, use the width of your finger. All right, Roald, I'm gonna add them to the pot. It's the last few here. We're going to fill it up with cold water and then we're going to cook them off until they're fork tender. So we're going to pop these on the stove, put the lid on, 
We're gonna bring them up to a boil for about 20 to 30 minutes. All right, so it looks like the potatoes are done, so I'm just gonna turn off the heat. I'm just gonna drain them. I wanna get all that water off. Season it up with some salt and pepper. Just combine that. Each and every piece passes by a camera in which a computer analyzes size and color. Any substandard fry to be is flagged and an air jet blows it off the production line. An unfortunate number of potatoes are thrown away each year. Some were not of the right kind. Some simply didn't make the cut. Some just accidentally fell on the floor. This happens. No need to be insecure about it. All this is only a small sacrifice in guaranteeing the high quality standard of the fries that are provided by this potato farm. These fries are crunchy on the outside, soft and creamy on the inside, and steamy hot with its delicious potato flavor. So I hope you all enjoyed this little farm visit. And for those of you whose potatoes do not quite fancy becoming fries, don't worry, next week, we're going to look at how potato gratin is made. See you next week.